everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to make uh, this thing called steak a poivre, which is also called peppercorn steak, but I like the steak a poivre thing. Um, our friends Bill and Elsa, who live up at the camp, we've been up to the camp a bunch of times. Elsa makes an amazing steak a poivre, and she's not here tonight, and we thought, let's try and make this. So, we don't know the expert here, but I went on the web and looked at a couple different recipes, and we're going to try this. It's basically really simple. We're going to cook steaks, and then make a sauce. And we're going to serve it with some uh, mashed potatoes that Charlie brought and I made some cornbread and so here we go. All right. The first thing you have to do is you got to get a bunch of peppercorns and you want to have them coarsely crushed. So my idea to coarsely crush them is to take them and put them in a Ziploc bag. So then I thought we'd get a rubber mallet and um, Is that cru that's not really crushing them, is it? I don't know, but that's really working. Plan B? Plan B. Is that really working? I don't see that's working either. Now we have our framing hammer. <laughs> uh, you take these and you pour them in a onto a plate. Like that. I think we're gonna to need to make more of those. So here are our steaks. You could use T-bones. Um, these were on sale, so we got T-bones. You could also use a tenderloin. Um, tenderloins, I don't think, have any bone in them. The T-bones do, but you have to salt these before we do this. So I, if I was professional, I'd have like a little bowl, you know? This is the heart attack dinner? This is, no, nah, this is, you know, I mean, we don't eat, we don't eat meat every night. We're actually, we're not big uh, red meat eaters. Um, but this is a holiday and our friends are here, so this is gonna smoke. You Hopefully you have a range hood or an exhaust fan or something, or maybe you're cooking in your fire. You could cook this in your fireplace, by the way, um, with a grill and a cast iron. But we're gonna have two cast iron pans here. Ah. So you want to get this to it's it's pretty pretty hot smoking hot so smoking hot. I shouldn't shoot the part where you're consulting the internet. For yeah. the... <laughs> okay, so our pans are hot. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our steaks which have been salted. We can brush off a little bit of that salt, and then we're gonna put this in here. And press this in, and we're gonna coat these with peppercorns on both sides, like that. And then this goes in there and cooks. That's the apois part of steak apois. All right, so now we now we cook these. And we're gonna turn them, and then we're gonna cook one more because we're having three steaks, and then we're gonna make a sauce, and we're done. Okay, so it's been about five, six minutes. We're gonna turn these. Wow, nice. Wow. Um, but you know, this is a simple sauce. We're gonna change it up a little bit. People use cognac or brandy, and we're gonna use Powers, Powers Irish whiskey. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> Which is a very inexpensive but really good Irish whiskey. So, all right. So we've turned these. And now we're gonna wait another, I'd say five, six minutes. If they don't have a bone in, they don't take as long to cook. So, these are T-bones. I just think I just take another person. Oh, no, I'm done. You can use a meat thermometer, or you can also just cut into the meat to see if it's done. I think I'll just cut into the meat, so. We're also, we're having uh, cornbread tonight. And, um, and also, Charlie made some really good mashed potatoes to go with this. 
And I just got a big bag of frozen peas. We're going to have frozen peas as well. I mean, they won't be frozen. We'll cook them. <laughs> We've had gravel before. <laughs> That's another show. Tuna casserole frozen peas. Don't, don't make fun of me. All right? We can't help it. Pretty rare. We're cooking multiple steaks. The ones that are finished, we're going to cover with a foil here. It smells great in here. It's full of smoke, but it smells great. We're going to take these juices and put them in the main pan to make the sauce. Okay, always have your fire extinguisher nearby for the next part. You should always have a fire extinguisher in your kitchen and not near the stove. It's time. Because if it's near the stove and the stove's on fire, you can't get to the fire extinguisher. Uh, we're gonna pour off some of the fat from here. A third to a half a cup of Irish whiskey. You can also use cognac, but we don't have any. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Wasn't that cool? Thank Heavy you. cream. Can you burn that? You can burn cream, but it's not gonna burn. It's like weird. So what you think of that flame? I'm stunned in the silence. That was great, man. Be very careful, okay? Be very careful if you're doing something like that. You take a long match. Tie your hair up. Tie your hair up, take a long match, and but you're burning off the alcohol part of the cognac or the whiskey. Looks like we're having a bunch of TV dinners. Alright, so I glugged a little bit too much cream in there, so we're just gonna let that cook down. And uh, we're gonna warm up the mashed potatoes and we're gonna eat. Okay. Alright, you see here when we pull this across, it doesn't quite fill in quickly. That means that the sauce is thick enough. Oh, by the way, I took the liquor and I poured it onto the uh, fry pan. You should take it off the burning stove, off the burner, pour the liquor in, and then go back to the stove. That was a wrong thing I did. Okay, a little bit of sauce here. That's a lot of I and mean, that's really good. That is really good. You take a hammer. Real, really good. And you can make steak. Okay? So, come to the greenhouse, tell me your steak of plot stories. Because this is really good. That's the call to dinner. Call to dinner. Be mine, be mine. <laughs> is that a fish? Was that a fish moose? That was a frozen fish from the pond. Wonder if that's gonna be coming back up. <laughs>